Hello and welcome to the Local Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Johnson. The Local Leaders Podcast provides a platform for successful business owners to share their stories, their experiences, their advice, and their ideas in order to help our listeners achieve more success in their business and in their lives. Get ready. Another great show is coming up. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Local Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Johnson, and I am here today with Tracy Milano from Coglin's Kitchen and Ale House. Welcome to the show, the podcast. Thanks for being here. Uh, you're welcome. It's Tracy Molino. <laughs> Molino. What did I say? What? I don't know. <laughs> I thought I said Tracy Molino that time, but you already, right. you already coached me once, and so yeah, I still managed to mess it up. <laughs> okay. I got Coglins. I got Coglins. Yes, name. you did. That's the one that's important. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you are as well. So thank you, thank you for fixing me, Tracy. I, I, oh, yeah, you're I, good. I depend on my wife every day to do that, and uh, she has a pretty busy job, but. We're, we're super stoked to have you on today. Um, Coglin's is out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and, you know, for our listeners' sake, uh, Tracy, I, I'd love to have you just kind of give us some background, tell us a little about the business, the restaurant, and, and what you guys are all about. Uh, sure. Uh, so myself and our partners, we all kind of hooked up together in roughly 2007 at our sister location. I started as a waitress two nights a week and, you know, selling beers out of a beer tub, nothing to, I was 23 and, you know, just kind of getting started. And um, then as time went on and our place grew uh, from like from our first location started to grow and we started to get closer together, that's when we started this new adventure and that opened in 2018. Um, so we're going to hit four years here in April. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been fun just a crazy ride when you think about how much time has passed it's like crazy to think that's how long we've been all together so uh but yeah so we just hit we'll be hitting four years in april and you know we're going strong so just excited well that is that is you know a really really big milestone and you know i guess the next one will be the fifth year and then 10 years and all that good stuff but the, the yeah. fact that you you started in 2018 so you got you got the business going. You guys were, were probably doing really well. Things were kind of getting routine, and then COVID, right? Right, and it was like, ah, now what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So let me just ask you this: Were you guys? And I don't, I don't want to use the word prepared for. Like any, nobody was prepared. But did you have like your online ordering and third party delivery? Um, and was that all was set up? The, the big thing for us was our footprint. We have a lot of outdoor dining as it is. Um, and once Pittsburgh, uh, the litigations went into place, we had to close for two weeks. And then we switched to, it was, we were mandated to close, I think for three months it was, um, starting on uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend for us. Um, it's a huge day in Pittsburgh, which was devastating, not to say the least. Our sister location um, that we all started at we usually had this big party and had like all this green beer and all this crazy stuff already ready. So we're like, ah, what do we do? You know, it was kind of just like panic. Um, but luckily at Coglins, we, like I said, we have this really big outdoor footprint. So when they pushed everything to outdoors, we were kind of throwing tables everywhere. Any place that would fit a table, we were putting a table. The, the big thing was when it rained, it was really like the, oh no, like, how do we, what do we tell our customers? They can't come inside. We can't let them in. So we had people sitting under umbrellas and just didn't really care. We're kind of just going with the flow. So, um, but yeah, the, the online part of it, we always did Uber Eats uh, from the beginning. And then uh, we started working with Pop Menu. I'm talking maybe six months before the pandemic happened. So it was very just, the timing was very like crazy that we kind of already had Pop Menu in play. They do online ordering and we were already kind of set up with them. So we just kind of, you know, escalated a little bit, started pushing that we were doing it and this is how you can order, blah, blah, blah. So that was kind of, um, the timing was really good. But the big things are footprint. I could, we would be so lost. We wouldn't have had that outdoor seating. I don't know what we would have done, honestly. Yeah, that is, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't, did not have it. And, you know, yeah. had to totally revert to, you know, kind of the takeout, drive, you know, drive up, curbside, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Model. Our sister location was not as fortunate. It's the, it's a sports bar concept. It's the total opposite of everything they were saying. We have communal tables and encourage partying. It's like, oh, I was like the 
you're supposed to social distance and it's the total opposite, our whole format. So it was very hard to pivot there. But uh, fortunately at Coglins, at least we had one or the other. So it was nice to have that as kind of like a buffer, you know. And then when you say when you say sister, I meant to ask you earlier about your sister business and kind of where you came up at. Do you guys all own that together as well, or are there? Um, so the two of the partners they started um, our sister place with their dad, and then okay. that's how I got hired was with them, and then we kind of grew into the new place together. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so they still are the sole owners of that with their dad, and then we have the the branch off with the other um, partners at the new place. So. Yeah. So you're kind of a stepchild to that original yeah. concept. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> but, but not the redheaded stepchild. So yeah. Very, for now. <laughs> okay, very, very, very nice. That's right. For now. For now. Well, I don't have to worry about it. As you can tell, um, uh, all I can do is paint this this head. But um, yeah, that that whole COVID piece is you know, obviously been a, been a, a, a big issue. So yeah. let me just ask you since 2018 and kind of coming into, you know, being a partner, being a, an owner in the business, um, you know, what changed for you taking on that ownership role? What, what's uh, been different? The big thing was for me was when I transitioned into management. Um, I started, you know, like I said, two nights a week as a waitress. So suddenly being the boss was a big deal. And it was kind of the weird dynamic of trying to figure out okay, now that these people that used to be my colleagues standing next to me, now I'm their boss. So now I have to make sure they're doing their jobs. And it was kind of a weird transition. Some really took it, you know, right, real serious, took me real serious. And then other ones, we had to have separate meetings and things because they like weren't getting it, like that they have to listen to me and do what I ask them to do. Like, it's not like, you know, we're talking about the bar business, you got to clean up. It's not anything that's like life-changing, but it's like, you still have to pull your weight and do your job. But so that was my first management part with them was in 2009. So then once it transitioned into ownership, I kind of already had my feet wet and I was already kind of confident in my abilities, knew what we needed to do. And I personally like the front of the house. I would much rather be on the floor. A lot of owners are like, oh, I'd rather, you know, run the business. That's not me. I like to be right in the customer's face because in my mind, they're coming to see us. So I want to make sure that I'm there and I'm, you know, supporting the staff and doing what I can to make the, I always call it the ship, to make the ship just go, you know, that's the part that I like, so. Yeah, yeah. well, and it sounds like you've got a ton of energy, I can, you know, I can tell, um, you know, all the enthusiasm and energy and, and high level uh, go-getter yeah. that you are, yeah, you've got to, you, you can't put you in a little office and sit no, in front of No, I would computer. explode. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be just pacing in circles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sound like my wife. She's kind of <laughs> kind of the same way. She's got to be rocking and rolling and doing something yeah. all the time. So yeah. Um, so you know, I appreciate you sharing that. And um, you know, it, it it tends to be when when I talk with the restaurant owners, people kind of fall into certain roles. Um, you know, especially when there's multiple partners. There's the you know the back of the house, the front of the house. There's right. the, the book person, you know, the person that likes to play with the numbers, and uh, maybe a marketing person that likes to kind of do that stuff. Are you guys pretty well split up in in all those areas? Really, yeah. And it's funny we're all very different, but very the same. We all have the same kind of goals. That it's like we want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can with what we have, and trying to come up with new ideas, way to push ourselves forward, to be different from everybody else, like constantly brainstorming different plans like there's stuff in the works for like um you know maybe we might start barrel aging our own liquor maybe we'll start brewing beer maybe we'll you know for a little while <clears throat> when we were doing takeout we had a little pickup window that we just kind of created out of nothing it was like we have to just figure it out you know so just always trying to be more innovative and trying to like you know just think of things that people aren't thinking of um so th that goal is always there but then there's like ones that are better at scheduling, ones that are better with front of the house, ones that are better with the back end of the stuff, like and doing the, you know, payroll and all that. So we all have our kind of our pieces. Like you said, we all kind of fit the puzzle together. And uh, yeah, it's it's crazy, but it's it's we've been together for so long that I can say anything to them and I don't care. <laughs> it's just you just say it. It doesn't, you know, no one gets hard feelings. It's just that we're as a team, you know, so it's really we're very fortunate for sure. Yeah, that that is that is really nice. Now, how many people are how many employees do you have in the in the um I just went blank at Coglin, sorry. Um, I think it's roughly somewhere around uh like 30, 30-ish. 30 so we have um 
uh, a lot of front of the house servers. Uh, we have a smaller bar staff um, and uh, we're very dinner forward. Um, so we get like brunch, happy hour, dinner crowd. Our late nights there on the weekends, but not um, all the time. It just kind of depends on what's going on. Um, and uh, then we, um, you know, back of the house kitchen guys, we have two management uh, managers in the kitchen and, um, you know, like bar backs, dishers, stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I think we're right around 30 ish, somewhere between 30 and 40. And uh, have, have you been able to kind of, you guys as partners, have you been able to, to kind of have find people or uh, hire people and retain people that are very similar to you guys in terms of, yeah, of I mean, how you roll? everything's a struggle right now. There's like, um, you know, another thing too, with the, with the restaurant business, everyone kind of always has other stuff going on. So you might have some people that are lifers that have been doing this forever that want to be a server. That's their, that's what they're cool with the path they're on right now. Other ones are in school. Other ones have other jobs. We just have them for part time. They're not sure if they want to go back to school. People sometimes move. It's like, it's a very like kind of chaotic, um, space, but, um, Overall, though, most of our staff has been with us for a while. We did, once COVID did happen, we did retain almost everybody. Um, it's we, That's another thing, too. It's crazy how we became this little, like, family that, you know, with the COVID struggles, you, you know, worrying about people testing positive, if people are around others or whatever, just trying to figure it out. Everyone's been really stepping up to the plate and covering shifts maybe they wouldn't have had or, you know, they don't normally do. Like, hostess has been very tough to fill that role. It's like just seems like we cannot get a hostess, but you know, luckily we've lately in the last literally like couple of weeks, we've been, we're in a pretty good place right now. Um, so yeah, so we've been, yeah, we've been pretty fortunate. So. That's awesome. And, and kind of the culture, I guess, of, uh, it's very family oriented. It sounds like in terms of, of how you guys all get along and, um, for sure. you know, are they, uh, are they as energetic and excited and, and all that? I mean, I, I try to keep up the tempo. I always call it. If I, if I'm, if I'm going good, usually the energy stays with the same, you know, I mean, everybody has a bad day. You got to try to leave that at the door, but you yeah. know, it's tough. It just kind of depends on every day's every, literally every day is different. Sometimes the crowd just is, you know, it's been kind of a weird vibe right now that some customers don't understand that we're on a wait. They don't understand that they can't make reservations. They don't understand that we're short staffed and the kitchen's closing early and we, we you know, we got to do, what we got to do. That's pretty much it. And trying to explain that to somebody that's not in the business, they just deer and headlights have no idea why this section's closed. They don't understand that. It's like, I'm sorry, three of my staff members tested positive today. So I sent them home and they're not coming to work. So I am short staffed. I don't know what you want me to say. This is just the climate we're in right now. So, yeah. but, um, you know, just trying to keep, keep everybody just, good and if stuff comes up we deal with it so there's times i'm i'm behind the bar there's some times i'm hostessing there are times when it's just whatever <laughs> we're just trying to like you know make it through you know you would think today that most most of our patrons our consumers or customers you think they would be educated by now that well, restaurants just, they have are... their own things going on you know there are a lot of if you talk to anybody that has kids they're so stressed about the way that things are happening with schools closing every other day and finding daycares that are closing every day. So if they have full-time work, I totally get it that they have, everyone has their own kind of stuff going on, you know? So when they come to the restaurant, they're planning on getting that escape. So they don't want to hear that they have to wait. They don't want to hear that they can't sit 20 people at one table. They don't want to hear that. They just want what they want. So we're trying our best to just accommodate everybody and, you know, just kind of go with what happens. That's, you know, that's kind of why we had to make some decisions. Like we can't see larger parties together. They have to, you know, if they're, they have to be on one check because it's just too chaotic that we, especially once we first reopened, it seemed like everybody wanted to all hang out with each other. It's like, I understand you haven't seen each other in a while, but I can't accommodate all these 10 tops that all come in on a Saturday night. You know, if it was a Tuesday, maybe, but it's, you know, it's, 7 p.m. on a Saturday. I can't just make a table appear, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's uh, just trying to, you know, just kind of go with what's going on and make your best judgments of how to make people, you know, understand and try to, you know, 
just set that bar. This is what we're doing. And this is, this is what you have to do. <laughs> no, I understand. So why, why do people come to Coglins? Is it the food? Is it the drink? Is it the atmosphere? Party um, the, our, um, our cup of tea is that view off the patio. If, uh, if you came around the corner from our front, you would have no idea that it was even there it kind of, you, it, you would never even know. And then when you walk outside, you're like, oh my gosh, you can see the city. It's not the the famous Mount Washington views from like the ones they always show on the news and that make it all over the, all the travel channels. But you get this little pocket of a view that wouldn't you would never even think was there. And then we do um, features every week for our kitchen. Um, our chef, his name's Ryan. He is super creative, likes to how a lot of places will do their specials based on, you know, things they're trying to get rid of or whatever. He's the total opposite. He loves to experiment and will just try totally random cuisines and different things that just like, maybe he saw it on like a website and wanted to try it out. Like stuff that like we have duck on the menu right now. And that's not, that's not even on our menu ever. So he likes to kind of play around with stuff and stay super seasonal, super like uh, fresh for what's going on right now. And then our cocktail menu, we change it up every uh, season also. And um, our uh, bar manager, his name is Brad, he also is super creative and likes to try out different things too. The same deal that he'll like, you know, see something on Instagram and then he'll try to see if we can pull it off. Uh, we were trying this, this like bubble thing that like would create like a bubble on top of the glass. And then once you uh, got to the customer, you can make it smoke that <laughs> those bubble things were really funny because you cannot walk with a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot go more than like half a half a foot <laughs> where that bubble pops. But that was a fun, like, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. But they're, they're both like, they both have that kind of same energy that they want to like do stuff that's different and be creative and try to, you know, just be different. So uh, I think that because that we're changing up a lot, it's never the same stagnant, the same menu. It's, um, you know, there's a lot of variety. So yeah, I, I, I like that, especially the idea of thinking about going out to eat and you get tired of going to the same places, but you're right. like, okay, what, what the hell is Ryan going to be cooking this week? Let me go see. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, we get earlier in the week customers because of that, because sometimes by like Saturday, since he's playing around with stuff, we might run out of things. So we have a lot of customers that come specifically Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, because that's when the specials are like brand new. That's the first day. So they know that they're going to get something totally different from our menu. And even if it's like a different appetizer, but they still get the same burger they always get, it's something still changing. So it's not, you know, the same old stuff. So just kind of, you know, makes it makes it fun. Well, that's that. I mean, that's pretty amazing because it, it almost sounds like your, you know, your slow times early in the week are, are not so slow. Is it pretty pretty even across the week? It just it, it's really crazy. This uh, January and February are tough, regardless, because especially. Uh, I don't know what you have, what if you're up with Pittsburgh weather, the oh, yeah. the whole month of December, it was like 50 degrees on Christmas here. So mm -hmm. it finally, just like last week, it officially got cold. So that first chilly kind of week, we're very slow and we're more, everyone knows about our outdoor. So we're definitely more of an outdoor place. So like our peak time is spring to like late fall we were on borrowed time in December when it was hitting those nice days. But uh, so now January, February, tough. Uh, but then as soon as spring hits is usually when we pick up. But like in our area specifically, a lot of restaurants have been closing uh, during the week. So there's been some Mondays where we think it's going to be a totally calm. We have two servers and then it's bananas because two or three restaurants in our area will be closed and there's nowhere to go. So then people are just looking for anything and we get that. So that's been a fun surprise <laughs> where it's like, oh, I thought we had a crazy Thursday, Friday, Saturday, nice Sunday. And then Monday is just as busy as it was on Thursday where it's like, holy moly, we're not getting a break. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant in the restaurant space for, for owners to try and feel those uh, slower times and Right um, now, are you guys doing much on the the takeout delivery kind of kind of piece, or is most of the revenue that flows through uh, on premise dining? Um, it just it kind of uh, go it varies. Honestly, we get uh we only do Uber Eats and we do the stuff through pop menu for pickup. Right. Um, there will be days that we will have 10, 15 Uber orders, and then other days we won't have any. So it's just kind of like it's very weird. It kind of just varies. 
Um, but we usually get at least one or two pickups almost every day. Uh, so that's in my mind, it's just a bonus that, um, you know, that people want to still do pickup. I think it's going to, since the weather officially turned, I think we're going to be getting more pickup uh, mm -hmm. just because people don't want to go out um, and um, getting more stuff with Uber. Uh, Popman, you just introduced this new uh, feature that they can condense all of the online ordering. So if you want to go with Grubhub and Uber Eats and all that, it'll go to one central location. So that's literally like a brand new feature. So we're kind of like, you know, going back and forth if we want to open up that floodgate of getting to everybody. Um, so we were having problems before that Grubhub would have our menu from last year instead of having our new menu. So it's like, okay, you gotta, you gotta, so people are ordering weird stuff that we don't have anymore. Like you need yeah. to stop. But so we've been kind of like going back and forth because we're not really sure, you know, some of the schools in our area just went back to hybrid. So we're kind of just, you know, trying to make sure that we're ready, you know, for whatever. Yeah. What do, what do you do? For, what, what POS system do you guys use? Uh, we have Aloha currently. Um, and it's been pretty good to us, um, you know, comparatively speaking to some, we've um, had some other ones that were kind of like, eh, you know, and uh, they're, they're really moving forward. The, the changeover times are really quick. They have a really good, like a uh, 24 hour service. So if stuff's going haywire, they usually are pretty good about it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we are now. And we're just kind of holding off until things go completely digital and just waiting until that card falls. So yeah, well, I was curious because, you know, you talk about updating menus to the different delivery apps and different in your websites and all that yeah. kind of stuff and, and having, having all that connected with your POS where you can fix one, you know, update one menu and it hits everybody else. Yeah. And, uh, that's very helpful. Yeah. Um, so let's say we talked a little bit about technology. We talked a little bit about uh, including POS and third parties. Um, let me ask you about marketing. Is, is that, well, you're marketing, you know, by helping us here with this podcast, but um, are y'all doing anything new, unique, different? Um, um, are you primarily sticking to social? Uh, well, I, um, I actually do our social media. Um, that's one of my um, roles. Uh, the, our Instagram presence is uh, really good. It kind of all happened pretty organically, uh, to be honest. And, um, we try to do different like, um, contests and things like that. And we try to stay super active on it. And I think the big one is if people comment or if they ask questions or if they like DM, literally DM us about random things, I try to stay really on it and answer like, hi, this is who I am. And this is the answer. Like, so then they know it's a real person that's talking to them, not like some I'm person not. or like, yeah, or like someone that runs our that's a marketing company. It's, yeah. it's us literally. And, um, so our Instagram has been going really good. We've been doing some stuff with, um, pop menu has like a, an email feature. So we've been doing like, Hey, thanks for coming in. Thanks for leaving these reviews. You can get $5 off your next order stuff like that. Um, but more traditional stuff we don't really do. We, um, kind of shied away from it. It just, it's hard to track it is really what it is. And we weren't really sure of what we're benefiting from exactly. We're trying to do more stuff that's getting um, Instagram um, influencers to come in or talking to them directly or getting like a media company we've had in the past to come and do photos for us. Um, just so then a lot of the photos look really nice and they can cross promote it on their sites too. Like we work with some photographers too that are local in the area where they'll come in and I'll buy them dinner and they'll just take photos of everything and post about it on their Instagram. So just, just to get exposure is really what we're going for. So. Yeah. I think that's really, really smart, Tracy. And um, because, you know, one of the, one of the critical things in the food business is to have, you know, beautiful, high quality images uh, yeah. in, on your website and in your social media. And so many, so many restaurants um, uh, miss out on that because, you know, they're, they're not really, hitting it with the images and the images they have aren't lighted well or, you know, or, yeah. or whatever. And um, they're just missing the boat. So I, I think that's really important. And the fact that you're, you might comp a meal to get some of that done and kind of work with, with influencers and photographers um, in that way is really in, inexpensive and effective for you guys. So good job. Yeah. And it gives them a chance to do what they like to do too, because they like to mess around with food or whatever and open up their, your their portfolio too. And uh, I was going to say the 
the weird thing is, is the photos that I think that are more like silly, like that are seem more real, I guess would be a way to say it. Like if the waitresses are screwing around or if we have like a, we're doing a Betty White promo uh, next week because her birthday was supposed to be on the 17th. Yeah. I bought a big old Betty White cutout and people in the restaurant have been taking f- funny po- photos with it. So, I mean, I, we're doing a whole promotion around this cutout. So, I mean, the ones that seem like a little bit weirder, they're always the ones that seem to get more traffic. And it seems like people like engage with it more because it's not just, here's a picture of this cocktail that looks really nice. Here's us. Mm-hmm. These are real people that are screwing around while they're at work, having fun and just showing this is, you know, this is who we are. It's not just a cookie cutter thing, you know? Yeah. That, well, I mean, you guys, I get the impression that it, that it's really a, you're kind of like a destination type place. It's all about the atmosphere, the fun, the food, the, sure. drinks, the energy, the, um, you know, it just, it, it's very up. And uh, yes. uh, very up. That's, what, that's exactly what we need right now is up. None of yeah. this down. We need up. <laughs> yeah, and, and we don't need we don't need people coming in complaining about the the cold weather and the uh, right. We just COVID need and everything up. else, right? Let's let's we have a good time. That's right. Uh, it's you know for those in and around um, around uh, your your area uh, in Pittsburgh. You know, I, I know that. Uh, you're probably uh, very well known, and and everybody's probably been there. But for those who are visiting, maybe or uh, sure. out of town, um, you know, if you haven't been to Coglins, uh, make sure that you find your way there. They're on 10 Virginia Avenue in Pittsburgh, and I didn't mention your website for our listeners. We actually will put it up on the video, but uh, it's eatcoglinslaw.com. Uh, E-A-T, oh, eat at, I missed it, eat at coglinslaw.com. Uh, make sure that uh, for all our listeners, you go there, you check out the website, you order online if you're nearby, um, and just make sure that uh, that you take care of your uh, your local businesses and, and try to give them support. So um, let's see, what have we not talked about, Tracy? Did we miss anything yet? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was I was going to say that I, I don't tell you our startup story. That's that's a good one. Uh, oh, give, me the, give me the startup story and then tell me about um, kind of what you guys might do in the future. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. So our startup story is kind of like just crazy. The uh, We did the build out. Um, the building was a gas station before um, we became the restaurant. And for a little while, it was it was a gas station originally, then it was closed, and then it was like the roll your own cigarette kind of shop, and they just had like almost like a convenience store kind of place, and then it was closed for about a year. Um, so when we took it over, obviously it was a gas station, so there's all these other things you have to worry about, like is there tanks in the ground, things like that. So after like a solid year of trying to get everything together we had water issues where it was like the pipes weren't going where they were supposed to go to the street. So we got delayed even more while all this was going on. I was making YouTube videos, just kind of walking around with my friend, literally on a video camera, talking to her as if I was just talking to you and talking about what we were doing. So the first like two videos did pretty good. The third video, once we got closer to the build out, it got like 20,000 views on you, on YouTube, which to me, it was like, holy crap, like this is going to be wow. crazy. So then we opened that first week or it was the second week of April in Pittsburgh that day. We did the soft opening was like Tuesday, Wednesday. Then we did like the full open Thursday that Monday. It snowed in April. Like it was, I'm talking snow, snow. Mm. And then that weekend it hit almost 70 degrees. Ah. So it was like, <laughs> the perfect storm obviously we were a new restaurant we were just kind of getting our feet wet we had this super nice soft opening and then the weather broke it was like hordes of people coming down the street you could see them flooding to the restaurant it was almost scary how busy we were and obviously how underprepared we were because every time you think that you're prepared you are not prepared (laughs) so there was a time on saturday after working, like every one of us were staying there till like almost five in the morning, trying to figure out tips and money and things just being a mess. And, you know, just trying to all get through what was happening. I was, I think I was sitting on the floor at my house telling my husband that I was very concerned that I made the wrong choice. 
I was like, I don't know if I can do this because this is crazy. How are we going to handle this volume? Because we were not thinking this volume at all. It was like, okay, we'll be busy. Not like we were that weekend because that's exactly what happens in Pittsburgh. The second the weather breaks, everyone's itching to get outside and just wants to get out because they've been trapped in their house for two months. They're like, please, just let me outside. And it was like that snow and then 70. Why is that real? (laughs) Nobody knows. But it was crazy. And and th- and then they had been watching you on the videos on YouTube. Exactly. And yeah. I think that kind of like just built up this hype. We had this big yeah. old sign out front, grand openings this day, blah, blah, blah. And I think just the fact that we were where we're at in Mount Washington and that we were kind of really hyping up the place for that that time. And then we got delayed. It's almost like the delay kind of helped us a little bit that it gave that chance to just keep building that momentum. What are they up to? How are they not open? They were supposed to open weeks ago. What the heck's going on? Like just that little bit of buzz. First, just like a, a couple minute YouTube video where I'm in a big puffy jacket and freezing to death because I'm walking around outside in February, like saying, this is where this is going to be. This is where that's going to be, you know, like just yeah. nothing like super easy to do. Anybody that's building a place, they, those hype videos might be cheesy, but you got to, it totally works for real. That's great advice. So um, I'm sure yeah. our listeners will appreciate that. And if you, if you're hesitant or shy, then find somebody who isn't. And, for uh, sure. Or even the, I, like I said, I was my, my, one of my best friends that she just, you know, brought her video camera. So it's kind of like, you're talking to your friend and, you know, we, it was really kind of quick edits, nothing super flashy. No, I think she put our logo in the front and that was literally it. And like nothing, none of this production, it was kind of just, here's the place. And it's like my friend taped it. <laughs> so, you know, so you can't get all hung up on the details. And that's why I said, like, it always seems like the stuff that I'm not so sure about it. It's the stuff that it usually does better. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. Well, thank you for yeah. sharing that. And yeah. And and as a segue, I'll just I'll just re-ask then again. Um, you know, what's next for you guys? You you crazy bunch of uh partners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh there's a new um there's a second, like a, another sister of Coggins Law that's um coming soon. Um, we haven't officially broke ground yet. Things got kind of delayed because of COVID. It was literally supposed to happen that same year of uh of when we shut down 2019 the build was supposed to begin like late 2019 into early 2020 that clearly that just hit the shelves for then because it was just the timing was terrible but um so the ground hasn't broke yet but um it's going to be uh, kind of towards the north hills like almost um if you're from the area you would not really know what i'm talking about but it's uh it's on nebo road <laughs> uh it's probably about 20 minutes from where we are now at coggins law and there are going to be um, a similar kind of format, um, except we're talking about maybe doing uh, coal fire pizzas and doing a little bit more uh, menu forward. Um, so we're a little more cocktail forward at uh, Coggins Law right now. Um, but that should be hopefully coming in the next two years. Um, but then who really knows? You know, we're, we're all still kind of excited and hungry for, you know, doing some more. So uh, hopefully, if this uh, new adventure goes, and then our sister location in Southside, uh, that's our original place. Uh, she's on 16 years now. So uh, we're just hoping to keep that train rolling too, you know, just kind of just going along. So, yeah, and, and give me a give, give us the name of the original location. Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, Carson City Saloon in Southside. Um, it's a sports bar, uh, uh, very college night, uh, super high energy DJs, stuff like that. Um, we're really pumped that the Steelers made the playoffs. <laughs> they yeah. would have saw that one coming. <laughs> yeah. So that was an exciting, uh, exciting turn. So Sunday should be fun uh, this coming week. And then we have obviously national championship at Carson City tonight. So that'll be fun. But uh, yeah, they're definitely more sports forward. We're, uh, we're also really pumped for the Pens too. Pens playoffs is the place to be is Carson City. It's like it is, the energy is just off the charts. It's so fun. So fun. So hopefully the Pens make a nice run too. But uh, yeah, but it's definitely more like sports bar, like younger crowd, super fun. So, well, it sounds like, it sounds like both of them are awesome, um, awesome places to be and to find yourself for a great meal, great cocktails, great company, uh, high sure. energy. Um, you know, make sure you, if you don't go to one, go to the other, if you're in the mm-hmm. area. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm assuming that, uh, towards Southside is not too far away from, from Coggins. Oh yeah. They're not even five minutes apart. It's really, okay. it's really close. 
which so, makes it good if you're running out of stuff too. That's a, it's a, it's a little tidbit. If you, if you have a place down the street and suddenly you have no to-go boxes, you know where to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Hey, and, and if you're drinking too much, you can walk from one to the other. You can just crawl down the hill to the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. That's always fun. Well, right. it's, it's Tracy Milano. It's been a pleasure um, getting to know you and getting to when you're Milano, 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 <laughs> Milano, Milano. God, I keep messing up. I'm going to go home and wash out my mouth. Uh, Coglin's Law Kitchen and Ale House. And uh, Tracy, you've been, you've been awesome, uh, full of energy and fun and exciting. And, and we really appreciate you being on our uh, podcast today. I'm sorry, I spoke over you. Uh, I just said thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Thank, thank you for being here. And, and hey, for all of our listeners out there, thank you for joining us um, with myself, Jeff Johnson, and Tracy today to uh, learn more about Coglins. And uh, we hope that you'll come back for our very next episode. And uh, thanks again, Tracy. We, uh, we hope everybody will show up and keep you guys busy even during the cold months of January and February. Appreciate it. All right, you guys have a great day, our listeners, and uh, we'll talk to you on our next show.